I'm Dimitri Tuksher, a custom tailor and CEO of the multinational LGFG Fashion House, and I make tailored bespoke suits for individuals all over the world. My clients are wealthy, successful people who live a life of luxury and glamour, which they have worked very hard to obtain. This is a show about those people, their lifestyle, and of course their suits. Today I'm in Tallinn, Estonia. Estonia shares a land border with Russia to the east, making it a prime target to be engulfed into the Soviet Union in 1940. Switching hands between the Germans and the Russians in World War II, Estonia only gained back its independence from the Soviet Union in 1990. Today, Estonia has been the most economically successful of the post-Soviet republics with the founding of Skype and other world-renowned IT companies with New York Times dubbing Estonia the Silicon Valley of Europe. This is where you'll find a lot of very successful world-leading startups, and where you'll find world-leading startups, you're gonna find a good tailor won't be too far behind. All right. So I got a, I got a text message on my trusty LGFG phone yesterday from Ray. Uh, Ray landed from New York at midnight. He is heading to France tomorrow, and we are in Tallinn, Estonia. And Ray lives in one of the old town apartments. It's a 14th century building. Uh, and we're on our way to see Ray right now. Well, Ray is an interesting client. I don't know what I'm gonna get. Sometimes I'll go see him at his office at midnight and other times he's at home at noon. He works all the time and he parties hard. So there's nothing but extreme when you're dealing with Ray. Okay, we're at the house of the CEO of the largest peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin exchange in the world and probably my only client that's ever been taken down by a SWAT team. I only brought the expensive stuff. Let's find out what happens. Yo, sir. Welcome. Hey, man. Come in, sir. I've been awaiting your arrival. Ray is one of my favorite clients. He is extreme. I think he just landed in from out of town, quite likely on a private jet that he rented. Never know what you're gonna get with this guy. Hey man, good to see you. Thank you for coming, sir. I've Where? been expecting you. Yeah, man, I saw you've been traveling. Where were you this month? Well, I've been to Hong Kong, Egypt, Sochi, Russia, uh, New York, Cairo, two other places I can't name at this moment, but that, please have a seat. That's just this month? Uh, that's in the past week and a half, actually. I work long days, at least, you know, 12 hour days at the very least, every single day, including Sundays. The past 10 days alone, I've been to about seven different cities. I got some suits to go with that new bling. What's that over there? <laughs> solid gold made by Ben Baller of Los Angeles. Damn. How much did that set you back? Uh, about uh, 20,000 at the time. Price in Bitcoin would be about 120,000 right now. So you Bitcoin's paid him in Bitcoin. I used our service, Paxful, which is peer-to-peer yeah. -peer finance, right? So basically, I paid someone Bitcoin, and then they sent money to Ben Baller's bank account. So yeah. basically, they bought Bitcoin from me, and I asked them to send money to a bank account, but it wasn't mine. It was Ben Baller's who made me that. So how Bitcoin can do anything. So uh, here's the deal. I brought a couple of new looks for you today. This line here is called Excel, and this is the stretchiest natural wool fiber in the world. Most of our clients, when they want a bespoke suit, they're looking for luxury. They're looking for something that is uh, more traditional. And this one here, this is a, a tropical collection. It's 100% wool. My goodness. Yeah. Got some bold stripes here, some beautiful window panes and checks, and some really textured layered patterns that you can wear like at a conference when you're speaking. A suit is a very powerful thing. You know, it really is the modern day armor, right? So what kind of armor would be perfect for a modern day, you know, crypto tech geek, right? It has to look great, especially when you're in the money business. You want things to be convenient, things to be easy. You know, what material is gonna resist wrinkling? What material can you wear on a daily basis? So these are beautiful and I'm tempted to get one or two, but uh, I have a vision, sir. Stretch denim, sir. Like jeans. Yes, but even stretchier. All right. This is an innovation. Imagine if you, there was a suit that was made out of denim and didn't wrinkle and still looked awesome, right? Is that even possible? Ray wants a stretch denim suit, which is a jeans suit, which uh, is not a normal request. I have never made a bespoke suit from stretch denim before. 
and I don't even know how it's gonna react. We would literally have to source just enough cloth for one suit, and I would have to really think about where to start with this one. You want a bespoke, tailored, stretch denim suit? Yes, sir. This is what we need, sir. A suit that will travel with a man. Okay. Geek, billionaire, financier, musician alike can wear this, go anywhere, do anything. Lenny Kravitz could put this suit on, sir, this stretch denim, bespoke suit. Go into a club, disappear there for 72 hours, come out and still look like a million bucks with not one wrinkle to be found. <laughs> when you're making a high-end suit, the cloth goes through about 16 different operations of heating and cooling and stretching. It's called sponging. And I have no idea how denim is gonna react to that. I have never made a stretch denim suit before, so I have no idea what to expect. All this talk, sir, is about to get my glasses fogged up. Yeah. That's how excited I am. So what I want to do, Ray, is I want to grab a couple measurements mm. uh, so that we can double check against your last suit. So I'll get you to stand up. Mm. And we're going to go over here. This guy has lived it all. He started out homeless in New York, had a string of startups, some very successful, was a cage fighter for a while, and now he owns the world's largest peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin exchange. Our first venture was a failure. And I was... Well, not practically homeless. I was homeless at the time, but I didn't wow. tell anyone. However, being homeless in New York City is not so bad. If you know where to go, you can eat very well and dress very well as well. We had to come here because eh, they passed a law in New York that made it uh, unadvisable for Bitcoin companies to be there. So we came here. Now we have about almost 80 employees. And what my company does, sir, is nothing short of releasing the waters, sir. We're restoring the flow of money not just between the rich people in the golden circle of finance, but for everyone, anyone, anywhere in the world where there are any limitations, obstacles, or impediments of any kind to using your money the way you want to use your money, that's where Paxful comes in. It's what I call the peer-to-peer -peer finance movement. What Uber did for transportation, what Airbnb did for hospitality, we are doing for finance, and it's about damn time. Now, you had a, you had a different, like, is this is not your first company. Oh no, I've been around the block, sir. Since I was 21 years old, that's when I started my first company. My first startup was intense. It was uh, very successful. And it was the ringtone startup. We did ringtones. And uh, you might laugh, you know, thinking about ringtones, but it was a multi-billion dollar business. You just, you made a website that people exactly. brought their ringtones. In 72 hours, I built the entire website and system where someone could, you know, upload a ringtone. And then anyone could come in and browse a selection, download it, and we charge them $2.50. I remember I, I had a, a big meeting with Harry Fox, BMI, ASCAP, CMRA. I got them all together. I was like, hey, guys, I'm giving you the deal of the lifetime here. I am starting a completely new revenue stream for you where I'm just going to take this little 20-second clip of this little monophonic tone. And I'm going to get you $2.50 for each one. I just want, like, I'll take 30% of that. You can have the rest. The response was not what I expected. And it did drag on for years after that, where I just spent years trying to cut deals with these music publishers, like 50 cents in the club. Made millions off that song. But was, I didn't have a license to one of the five authors who own like 1% of it. He could come after me for $184,000 per infringement. We have some pretty wealthy clients who live in very luxurious environments and Ray's no different. He lives inside a medieval building, a penthouse that's built into the building and uh, it's pretty unique. And this is a, a new place for you? Yeah, it's got a working fireplace and we've added a few augmentations to it, but I love the high ceilings and the wood everywhere. It kind of uh, opens up my Yeah, mind. show me around a bit. Like, I wanna, I wanna check this place out. Yeah. So you got, so this is a, a medieval building. Mm -hmm. And it's a penthouse suite with a chimney fireplace going all the way up through the top. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I don't think I've seen that before. Like, is there anywhere else in the world where you can get, like, a medieval castle furnished into a penthouse with a fireplace in there? There are not many old towns in Europe that survived the war. This is one of the few that this is survived amazing. unscathed. So, yeah, yeah. this is quite, quite the place. I'd like to show you this. This is the pride of my co-founder. He built this here. This is uh, custom made from this German firm. This is a state-of-the-art DJ set here. It is pretty mm. awesome. And we've rocked the house here. We have some amazing parties here. Talk of the town. So you have your own DJ that you brought in here to work the turntables for like a house party in here. This is the only place in Europe where you can come, hear a DJ spin 
16-bit era of video game tunes alongside <laughs> like Flo Rida. Right over here, sir, is the master bedroom. Let me show you around. There's a uh, jacuzzi up in here as well. Mm. Now, I wish I could say that this jacuzzi has been filled with a plethora of strung out young models, but I'm just a nerd, sir, a geek. And so, usually... so, so it has been. <laughs> I'm going crazy, I'm flying up my zone. I already missed the ground. You left me a blade and all alone. Nobody could hold me down. Nobody could hold me down. Here we are, sir. My favorite place in the entire city in the biggest functional terrace in all of Old Town, sir. Now look at that. Now that's a view of the water. You got like the, the ferry docks over there. Oh, that's right, my friend. I can see the ships rolling in here. Yeah. It's beautiful. Wow. Uh, sadly, there's no peeping available here. But I have been peeped on myself, which is why I don't come out here naked anymore. Yeah, tell me about that. Well, sir, I've had some run-ins with the law. It's true. But my attorney advises me not to talk about those things on camera, especially. I understand. <laughs> right here, an epic scene transpired. Something the likes of which will make your toes curl up, say, and the hairs on your chest grow out. It was absolutely, oh, I, well, I can't talk about that either. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a fun night, so we have some epic parties here, sir. Right there, we have a view of Alexander Nevsky Church. Isn't it beautiful? Look at those oh, wow. domes. The Alexander Nevsky Cathedral uh, was built between 1894 and 1900 when Estonia was still part of the Russian Empire. Tallinn's town wall is one of the best preserved medieval fortifications in Europe. The old town in Tallinn has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1997 and is listed as an exceptionally complete and well-preserved example of a medieval Northern European trading city. A highlight of the old town is the Town Hall's Tower, which is a 34 meter high tower with balcony views over the old town. It's a big tourist attraction. And right across from it is Europe's oldest pharmacy, which is the Town Hall Pharmacy in Tallinn. In Tallinn, you'll find what was once the tallest building in the world during the 15th and 16th centuries, which is the St. Olaf's Church. All right, brother, I'm gonna go back to the office, make a couple calls, see if I can get you that fabric, okay? Sir. I'll do my best. I have all faith in you, sir. Let's get it done. Let's go. <laughs> uh, stretch denim suit is going to present a unique challenge. I'm going to make some calls. I have a few friends in the industry that make cloth and see if they know somebody that's willing to sell me four meters of cloth for a one-off one stretch denim suit. So uh, we got Ray's suit here. This is a very unique delivery, but I hope to deliver a suit that's gonna be one of his favorites and maybe even his favorite. Hello? Hey, man. Oh my goodness. I got some for you. Good to see you, brother. Yeah, got your suit made, man. Yeah. So I ended up, uh, this suit looked so good, man. I ended up getting one for me too. This stretch denim thing might be a thing. We ended up contacting different suppliers to try out different bolts of stretch denim. It was a very unique requirement that we were dealing with. And I had the exact same suit made for me that we ended up making for Ray. And once I put it on, my confidence in this delivery went vastly higher. I think you're gonna like the color on this. Oh. And we ended up ordering 80 meters more of this cloth because I'm sure once this gets out, more people are gonna want this suit. And it really looks like a wool too, doesn't it? Yeah, and it stretches, my God. Dude, just wait till you try it on. Now I went with green, and the reason I picked this for you, dude, is because uh, it's like money, you know? I'm thinking like Bitcoin, money, Ray, it all goes together, right? Oh, of course. You're the man, dude. Pretty exciting, hey? So this is my first, uh, my first stretch denim suit delivery. For maybe though, I don't even know anybody that's ever had a bespoke suit made in stretch denim before. But paid for with Bitcoin. Paid for in Bitcoin, yeah. So it's oh, a new world, man. man. It's a new world. This is exciting. Oh yeah, it sure is. So let's do this. Go mm. ahead and uh, I'll get you to put on the trousers, and mm. then you'll come back in, and we'll do the jacket and vest, okay? If there's anything I would drop my pants for, sir, it's this suit. Hold me down. Man, check this, gentlemen. Oof. 
Why don't you come over here? Got over gotta, let's, let's do come over, come over here. You gotta do a fitting, man. Fitting, man. What are you talking about? Come over here. Is... Actually, just be right there. Let me take a peek. Just let, just uh, put your arms down. Oh, you can throw the left hook in these, man. Oh, yeah. This is great. You couldn't do that in a normal suit without ripping it. No, man, no chance. This is awesome. I, I can't imagine a better suit. It passed the left hook test. You know, you could uh, fight a gang of dudes in this suit and not rip anything, and that's amazing. So what more could a man ask for, especially a Bitcoin guy? There's a lot of requirements that we have. You have to look good, and you have to be able to throw a good right hand. So the suit fit pretty nice, but what I was really impressed with was the vibrancy and the color of the suit. Really looks like wool, and I'm gonna wear mine too because I fly a lot and I wanna look sharp, and uh, I was very, very impressed with how it turned out. Ray loved the suit, he wears it very well, and I hope that in two years, he likes it as much as he does today. Ray works hard, he plays hard, he does everything to the extreme, and a party with Ray is like no other. Recently, there was a story in the tech media that suggested Ray might have partied a little too hard. Something about a SWAT team coming to get you and your team there. What, uh, what's going on there, buddy? There was guns involved. Gun was legally purchased, but the people downstairs didn't know that when they saw my cohorts uh, taking some Instagram pictures on the roof of our Miami penthouse. So, within about four minutes, the entire SWAT team was deployed to our penthouse. I was sitting there casually reading a science book, and then I hear, <laughs> snipers in position. Uh -uh. I was like, some kid with a walkie-talkie walking around, went back reading my science book. Next thing I heard was a knock at the door. Police, open the door! At that point, I realized this is not a practical joke. So I put down my science book very carefully. I get up with my hands up, knowing that there are people probably outside watching me, my Captain America Speedos, and I walk to open the door. When I open the door and I open it very slowly with both hands visible, I see a man holding a gun looking right at me with a look of fear in his eyes and full SWAT regalia. Things were serious, my friend. I managed to talk them out of shooting me in the face, <laughs> and now we got a few kicks to the gut. I told them, hey, there's a legally purchased unloaded, in fact, never loaded, AR-15 in the living room, wrapped up in the packaging. So they arrest us. The police station is actually right next door. Take us there. They interrogate us. But uh, the charges were dropped about a month later. We actually met with the uh, Dade County Gang Persecution Unit, the head of the guy. And he, was, he wanted to know about Bitcoin. He was really curious about our business, how peer-to-peer -peer <laughs> finance work. We had a great chat. Met for drinks later in New York. Well, man, listen, uh, I'm glad you like the suit. I'm glad you made it here without being shot in the face. That's yes. really good. And, uh, you know, I'm going to follow your Instagram adventures and uh, hopefully get a few more people to follow you so they see the great suits you wear. And I keep out of trouble, okay? Uh, looking this good. I mean, only trouble can come my way, sir. I mean, come on. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Cheers. This is awesome. Okay, uh, so Ray is very happy. The suit turned out... I mean, it looks incredible. And so uh, we're off to see the next client. Economic platforms are extremely, extremely important um, for areas that don't have access to banks. We're talking about individuals that don't have cars, 
They don't have bicycles. They don't have motorcycles. They can't go anywhere. But every single person has a phone. And I would say, you know, more than half of them are smartphones. And that's all you necessarily need, right? You know, with the growing concerns and con conflict areas and these types of areas are, are frowned upon with corruption, with mistrust. And I think that, you know, peer-to-peer -peer and, and taking out that middleman really allows us as the organization to get our funds there securely, uh, promptly, and more efficiently.